Good evening, everyone. Today I want to introduce to you my friend Anderson Correia, and uh, he is from Brazil, São Paulo, and he's the founder of YouTube channel English Room. Tonight we're going to talk about language learning methods and the ways to acquire a foreign language in a very rapid and simple way. Hey everyone, how are you? Thank you for inviting me to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure to be at uh, their channel. And let's go, let's do it. Okay, so my first question to you is, what was your first foreign language you learned? And actually, tell me a story about it. I've learned only English so far. Uh, I'd like to learn a little bit of Italian, but I'm still in the process. I learned by going to the USA. I stayed there for one month. But it was a very intense month. I had many friends from Europe and I avoided Brazilians the most I could. And also I studied in an English school there. I don't know if you ever heard about Kaplan. It's a very intensive course. I took four hours a day of studying plus two or three hours of homework. So it was very intense and part is every day. Interesting. So like initially you spent one month and you went back, returned from the United States and you already felt like fluent in English. If you don't make additional efforts, um, it doesn't work that fast within one month, for example. My relatives, they spent abroad some time, even a year, but it didn't work out with the fluency, you know? And uh, right now my question for you is, how did you apply English? I mean. Uh, you did grammar exercises, or like only this, or you talked to people about specific topics, for instance. I went to the United States in 2009. Uh, after that, I returned to Brazil and started attending bilingual at Itaú. And after that, I started giving classes. The one month was enough for me to be confident to attend in English. But the classes really made the difference. Uh, now uh, let's go into details. Uh, after the first months in the United States, you took a course there of English. And uh, which methods they applied to you to, to teach you English, for example? Like uh, you had a lot of grammar exercises, as I may suppose you had conversational classes. And well, as you lived in the environment, environment helps to a certain extent, you had the uh, possibility to socialize with the locals, am I right? Which of these points, or methods I may call them, help you the most? I think the most important is for you to take some risks, uh, to go there and try, and you're going to learn from your mistakes. So you're going to improve after you commit many mistakes. So the environment helped a lot, because in the first two days I wasn't able to talk to people. And when I went to party and got drunk, actually, I started talking to everyone. Yeah, so consuming alcohol help, helps to relax. Yes. I mean, what I may understand from this, to learn language faster, you should be relaxed. Yeah, and you should take some risks, because what I realized is, when I was sober, I didn't take any risk. I was, oh my gosh, someone's going to evaluate my English and they're going to think I suck. Not my English suck, I suck because I don't speak. So I didn't speak at all. What I understand from your story is like, first is to relax as a conclusion, and second is not to be afraid to make mistakes. Yes. Right. In the next day when I woke up, I of course had a little hangover, but also, I had an um, inspirational moment because I said, okay, yesterday I was drunk and I was talking. So, I know the English. I just have to put this in practice. So, I said to myself, okay, from now on, I'm going to take some risks. And in the third day, uh, actually in the fourth day, I went to the English school for my first day, and it was going to be the leveling exam. And when they leveled me, I, I received the status of high intermediate. Cool. So, I was basic, 
and I made this exam here. I was going to do the get started two. It's like the basic two of the course. And after these three days, I was already high intermediate. So I think the most important is this: you you get rid of your fears and you try to interact the better you can, even if you don't have all the resource, even if you don't have the proper vocabulary. Let's say you don't have, you don't know how to say a word. You try to circle this. You don't know how to say hate. You say, oh, I feel the opposite of love. So if you start making these adaptations, you're, you're going to sound much more fluent and you're going to get much better with your English. And also, you're going to get the most important of a language, which is communication. Uh, what, what I understood from your story right now is that like, the core method for you is communication, to communicate a lot every day, like with with more with more most people possible, and with a lot or like with a lot of people, and yeah, never stop, never stop to communicate and go, go and go, uh, like less less books, less stuff, like less formal stuff, more communication. Do I, did I get you correct in this regard? I think the communication is the goal, not the method. Communication is very important, but not only communication. I think the important is. You, you to be immersed in the English. So, for example, here in Brazil, I give classes, and to my students, I always recommend: oh, go to meetups, go talk to someone in WhatsApp. I also have a group in the in the WhatsApp where people can communicate in English. So, I think the point here is be immersed in the language. If you are all the time thinking in English. It's inevitable. When someone talks to you in English, you're going to start thinking in English. If you're all the time thinking only in Portuguese, you're not used to thinking in English. So when you, when someone talks to you in English, the first thing you do is translation. Yeah. You translate to Portuguese. The time you get to translate to Portuguese, you lost all the flow of the communication. So you, you don't know what the person is talking to you anymore because you are still stuck in the first word the person said, uh, if you are all the time listening to songs, um, watching TV shows, you are talking to people on WhatsApp or even face to face, you are trained. Okay. Well, don't you agree it's a bit stressful if to get a complete exposure? Yeah, it's totally stressful. Uh, but the point is, you have to get out of your comfort zone. So if you are already in touch with your own language, you're always going to look for something related to your own culture. Have you ever seen people when they go abroad and they try to look for local communities of their own country? They try to look for food that is similar to their own country. Why do you, why do you even travel to a different country? if you're going to look for your own country inside the, the other country. So you need to really be exposed to the different culture, to the different language, to the different everything, and then you're going to learn for real the language. And yes, it's a stressful in the beginning, but it's also very, very rewarding, because you're going to get to know a lot of new people, you're going to expand your mind, you're going to improve a lot your perception of the reality. And this is the point. Get stressed, but get rewarded. And you're going to learn much faster than someone who goes in the comfort zone step by step. The person studies 10 minutes a day, watch a video, and, say, and says, oh yeah, I'm studying a new language. So maybe this person is going to be inside a different country, and after four years, uh, this person is going to realize that she or he doesn't even know how to say basic things on the language. So this is comfortable. Yeah, I, but I, it's I, not rewarding. I understand your point of view. And uh, in Ukraine, I, I had a, like, a friend who was a business coach, and uh, he's been telling he he used to tell one same one phrase: if you want to learn a foreign language really fast. You should go to the country where this language is spoken and stay there several months without money and without your, your cell phone. That's it. 
and you will see that you will get the result and you will reach almost the level of advanced student. And in this regard, I think he was right. If you stay without any connection with your home and without any financial means to survive, it gives you no way out and, well, you progress. Now, a little bit uh, change of the topic. You told me that you started giving classes. Um, how come you decided to become an English teacher? Oh, I was unemployed and I was looking for a job in the marketing field, which is a very strict area. And I decided to teach English because I would improve my language skills. I would get ready for job interviews because they were all in English. And in the end, I really liked that. So I decided to stay in this area and to improve this, to start a channel, to start the meetup group. This is basically what I was looking for when I was trying to find a job. I was trying to find a job where I would work with business model. And I also feel very passionate because the interaction with my students is very positive. It's much better than I would have in a working environment. I can help people develop their own skills and I can also do what I like when I want to do it. I feel very comfortable and happy with this. Cool. Another question is, after you, like some time you taught your students, for instance, uh, did your methods or like did, did your principles of teaching, did, did they change or not? Okay, when I was a teacher at WhatsApp, uh, it's, a, it's an English school here in Brazil, uh, um, I, we had the formal methodology and we had to follow this path. So they, they give even the pictures in the class. So let's say, oh, now it's a group work. It's, it's written in the teacher guide, group work. Oh, now it's a pair work. Pair work in the teacher's guide. Uh, role play. Role play in the teacher's guide. Even the jokes are in the teacher's guide. So uh, you may say, oh, but then you didn't learn anything from there. Of course I did. I learned how to teach because actually many of these ideas they were given were great ideas. And I said, oh, maybe I can include this in my, in my own way of teaching. So at this point, I'm very grateful for you to give an interview, to share interesting information about your experiences, about your methods, about your life story of becoming a teacher from your interest to English. Uh, what I would like to mention too, uh, that Anderson has a YouTube channel called English Room, and we met at the meetup of his channel, and it was a really cool event, and uh, I enjoyed it really, because there were like people getting, getting together and talking, trying to practice English and Portuguese, and uh, well, could you tell me more about your channel? In my channel, actually, we are trying to give a path for people who are trying to learn a new language. The name is The English Room, so of course it's much more focused in the English for Brazilians. But we're going to give rules of thumb that you can use to any language. This is Darius, The English Room. Thank you for inviting me to be here. And yeah, up to the next time. Bye.